Okay, so here is some of the side trim in the boat. Basically what we're doing is we're removing that horrible um, fabric that's been, uh, that smells of mould. And what we're doing, we're replacing it with a nice piece of Tasmanian oak. So there's three strips of this timber that we're going to put in Tasmanian oak. And it's going to give the boat a slightly different touch. Um, a lot of the bigger boats have a bit of timber in them as well. So we're just going to try and get that little bit of a feel. It's going to have the exposed screw holes. Because I'll explain to you what they did here. So for instance, there's a screw hole right there. They basically, I don't know if you can see it right there. Right there. So... Behind the pleats, they just cut a little hole and stuck the screw in behind there, then put the pleat back over like it doesn't exist. Can't do that with the Tasmanian oak. Um, the screws have to be exposed. So what we've done, I've got some nice screws and I'm going to make them a feature. So not only are we using Tasmanian oak, we're staining it to a golden brownish color as well. So we've got three pieces of timber of that to do. So we'll give that a go and see how it goes. Okay, so we've marked where we want all the holes. Now, these are the screws I'm going to be using. Basically, they've got a square head inside them. If I use a Phillips head, it could be a possibility that the head could strip and it won't look good. So I've used a square drive screw. They've got a better holding capability. So in the wood, I'm going to drill a pilot hole, the same size as the screw. And what that's going to do is it's not going to get any resistance on the sides of the feature timber as we're screwing it in once we've that means all the force will be going into the timber behind this piece behind here and it won't put any resistance here and that'll stop that splitting especially on the ends all right so once i've drilled that hole then i'm going to Use a countersinker, a little bit shaped on an angle like that. The countersinker will conform sort of to the uh, the the angle of the bugle of the screw, so that'll cut that. Now this is going to take me a trial because. If I countersink too much, it's not going to sit flush with the surface of the wood. So I'm going to do a little trial with that. And I should be using a pedestal drill or a stopper to stop the drill going in too far. Otherwise, they might not look right. I'll see how I go. I'll just trial it with a drill. If it doesn't look right, I'll do it with a pedestal. All right, so I'm going to try it on a scrap piece of wood first and we'll see how that works. So I've got just a sample piece of Tasmanian oak here, just an offcut. I'm going to do a little trial in that and see how it looks. I've got a scrap piece of timber underneath it, just so that we're not drilling into our benches or the tables and that sort of thing. So now I'll change the bit on that and see what it looks like now.
So that's what it looks like. I'm going to try something else, but because I'm going to find it hard to gauge to get every screw flush with that one. So what I'm thinking is I might try all this bit. All right, let's see how that one goes now. Oh, I think that one's better. All right, I can gauge it better on that. Makita bit with that cutting face there. So we'll pre-drill with the screw for with the drill bit first, then that next, and then we will put the screw in. Alright, so let's make it happen. We've sanded that piece of timber, we've drilled all the holes, countersunk all the holes and sanded it again to get the rough edges around the screws away. The back section of the timber, I haven't really worried about sanding it too good because it's going to be right against the wall, it's never going to be seen. Uh, we're going to give it a coat of varnish so no moisture can get in on the back of the timber as well. Before we go any further, we're going to stain this piece of timber, I've stained these three pieces of timber, but I've sanded just a sample piece. I'm going to put some stain on that and see what it looks like. It's good practice to do that rather than on your good piece in case you don't like the colour of the stain. Um, that way there you're not ruining a good piece of timber like that. So we'll try that, then we'll stain, uh, stain that one, and then we'll pre-drill the other ones and sand them as well. Alright, so let's have a look at that. Alright, so the surface looks a bit rough because it hasn't been sanded properly, but this is only a sample. So, I quite like it. It's got that nice maple finish to it. Once we put some satin satin um, clear over the top of that, some marine satin clear. I think that's going to look really nice. Alright, so now all we have to do, we've tried that, 
See how it brings out all the grain in the timber? Like, look at that piece of wood up there, and you can not can hardly see how good it looks until you sand the surface and look at the grain it brings out. So now, we'll try it on the next piece, because I'm convinced that I like that. So, let's have a look at how it brings out the grain here. Don't have to do the back, but you just do it anyway. All right, so that is compare the look at that to look at that. Look at that. Basically, that's going to be a nice finish in the cabin. You know, um, you know that video I showed you about MX-5? Where could I learn to drive like that without bashing my own car? Okay, so we're in the boat now. A couple of weeks ago we decided that we wanted to redo the interior of the boat because um, it's a bit outdated, a bit old and tacky. So as you've seen in some of the previous photos, we had the fabric covering some of the timber work, um, marine ply actually, and I decided I wanted to put a little bit of timber in the boat to give it that boat feel. Um, so we went along and routed the timber as you've seen in the previous videos and this is what we've come up with so it's maple stained Tasmanian oak they're going to be the trims inside the cabin around the top where the top hull joins to the bottom section of the hull now these were the fabric covered side pieces on the inside of the boat we've also recovered these in a vinyl a cream vinyl and so that's a shelf underneath the cabin as well and that's another bit where the lights go so um, that's our job for today we're going to put this together I'm going to replace some speakers as well. So I'll just go in the boat and show you where. Oh, also, the mirror. Underneath this yellow taped piece of wood is the, um, the mirror itself. 
I'm not going to take that cover off until I actually fit the mirror. Um, because it's perspex, and the perspex, even just by touching it by finger, slightly scratches easily. So I want to leave that right to the last minute before I uncover it. Alright, so I'll remove these, and I want to show you what we have actually... Let me get in the cabin now, just one second. Just leave those there. Let's make a bit of space. Alright, so I find it easier to get in the cabin backwards and then step around and back around. All right, so this is the color fabric. All right, get back out. This is the color fabric that we've taken off, and that's what I'm replacing it with around the top. So this is a trim around the kitchen. I'm going to be doing this in Tasmanian oak as well, and giving it that timber look we're not overdoing it with the timber we're just putting a little bit and it's just going to finish it off